Welcome. Here we are today with Mitch Gregory from All EV. He's one of our Dalhousie engineering students. And uh, we have an exciting day today with some video we're going to be doing. And uh, what are you actually going to do today, Mitch? So what we have here is a Tesla Model 3 drive unit. Uh, on the left, we have the, uh, the subframe and suspension that the drive unit sits in. We've removed the, the drive unit and we're going to completely disassemble it and show you what's inside of it. Okay, so we're in front of the motor now. We have the entire subframe with motor, axles, suspension, everything all in one unit. Really well packaged. Uh, it's pretty impressive how Tesla did it. We're gonna look at the drive unit specifically. We've got our front right motor mount, front left motor mount, and then our rear mount. It's only mounted in three spots. Uh, around that we have our cooling uh, cables that go to our cooler. We've got our high voltage connector. There's no battery, so this is, uh, it's completely dead. It runs up to uh, the plug up on the face here. Down below we have a low voltage connector, which has 30 pins on it. And then we have uh, some cooling for the inverter. So this is the inverter cooling, and then we have the oil cooling over here. They run in series. So the coolant that goes into the, the oil cooler also goes through the inverter. So this is what it looks like uh, in the rear subframe. And uh, we're gonna remove it and show you what it looks like on its own. We've got the drive unit on the stand. We fabricated this out of a piece of pipe and some, some steel bar, welded her up. And now we can rotate this motor in different positions and take parts off. The first parts that we wanna take off are the cooler and the front left mount. There's a little clip. Once you uh, pry that out with a screwdriver, you can pop that off. There's a couple clips. Tough one. Uh, there's one more down here, it's already been removed, and then two bolts. There we go. That guy there. Next up, we're gonna move, remove the front left motor mount. Next up, we're gonna remove the high voltage cabling. So, get a close up on here. Yeah, the way to remove these these large connectors is you have to pop the red little snap and then this whole arm goes up and releases the latch. So that'll pop this off. We've got a 10 millimeter bolt here. I'm gonna remove that. Next up, we're gonna flip the motor over so we can remove the inverter. All right, so on this side of the motor, we have a high voltage connector, positive and negative, and then we have a 30 pin communications connector. This is low voltage. Over here, we have our coolant for the inverter. So we're gonna remove this plate uh, and expose uh, the, the coolant. So this, it's basically a coolant manifold. So we've removed the coolant manifold and in behind, you hear that? <laughs> these, uh, these little fins are, they, they work as a heat sink uh, to, to take heat away from the inverter. Kind of interesting, there must be a couple hundred of them. A little aluminum, billet aluminum I believe. Uh, next up we're gonna remove this high voltage connector. Now, we must remove this plug and the three bolts behind it. It's really important because it connects the three legs of the inverter to the motor. And if you don't do that, you'll have to pry this case apart and you'll, you'll destroy stuff. So let's remove that. Yep. So we've already had this out, so it'll probably come out easily. But if you're doing this for the first time, you'll have to pry at it. So there we go. We got two O-rings to keep any dirt or, or any water or anything from getting into the casing. And then beneath that, we have three 10 millimeter bolts that hold the windings on. Next up, we're gonna remove these 12 bolts that hold the inverter on, pull it off.
Nope. Go. Just needs a little lift. Come right off. There we go. We have our inverter. We're gonna get into this later. But for now, we'll just leave it right here. So after this, we're gonna actually remove the motor and then we're gonna get back to these bearings on the, uh, the case. Okay, so I'm gonna use my handy dandy battery moving part. Raise it up and then put that motor on. So before we remove the motor, we have to remove this speed sensor. So we have five volts. This just falls right out, we'll try. Boom. So it's kind of like a motor. Uh, I believe they're looking at the, the reluctance uh, as this uh, triggering wheel, it's a triangular triggering wheel, passes by these little coils. Okay, now we can remove the 10 bolts that hold this motor on and we can wiggle it free. Split it with that plastic uh, pry piece, and then now it's still in the spline. There we go. Okay, to remove the rotor, I've enlisted the help of Elizabeth. So I'm going to pick the, the entire motor up, and Elizabeth's going to guide these two sockets onto the, the back of the rotor, and then the weight of the the, the whole assembly is going to push the rotor up and then we can remove it. The magnets that are in the rotor are holding it to the, to the case. Same for you. And yep. so this side ring, right? Yep. Ready? Wow, <laughs> that's ever gonna sound good. There you go. There's your rotor, here's your stator. And then at the bottom, uh, there's this little uh, thrust washer that, uh, that keeps it uh, tight. There you go, that's how you remove the rotor. All right, back at the casing, in order to split it and show the gear set in, inside, we need to remove 18 bolts. So let's do it. Before I pull the last bolt, I'm going to lay this on the side and I'm going to lift the casing up vertical. It's much easier to do it that way. Okay, so before I remove this casing, we're going to remove this bearing plate. It has a couple bearings for the input shaft and the secondary shaft, uh, and there are seven bolts. There we go. Gasket. And it's really important not to lose these little washers. Okay, one more bolt. Now we can remove the case. So in order to remove the case, you just have to wiggle it. Uh, it's a little tricky, but off the wiggle. Off. The input shaft is trying to come with it. Okay. Just bring it with it. There we go. And then two of these have to come together. There's this plastic guard that holds it. single component from this drive unit. Now I'm gonna put it all on the table here and tell you a little bit about how it all works. Part looks fantastic, the amount of engineering that's gone into this and the teardown. The teardown looks awesome, you got laid out nicely. Maybe explain uh, what all these parts are now. Cool, so I've arranged it in a way that, uh, that I should be able to explain a little bit how it works. So to start over here, 
we have our high voltage cable that uh, brings high voltage DC current to the inverter. And inside this inverter, we have the, the brawn here and then the brains over here. So this is the, basically the controller and this is what inverts the DC current, which comes in here, goes into a capacitor bank and then is, is switched back and forth to create sinusoidal waves uh, that are then passed to the motor. Now, we have to cool these, uh, these triggering uh, MOSFETs, uh, and that's what this manifold does. So we saw earlier the heat sink, and this manifold passes coolant through the heat sink. Now that's sealed, so the, the circuitry does not get damaged. Now like I said, we have, uh, it's an AC motor, so we have sinusoidal wave, three phase, uh, going to this stator. And what that does is that uh, it, the coils create a magnetic field that reacts with the magnets, these neodymium magnets. Do you have that metal yep, stick? Right there. Take, take a look at it. Like uh, right from here, it's, yeah. you can feel the strength. So the magnetic field induced by the stator reacts with the magnetic field uh, on the rotor, and that produces a torque. Then we get a torque multiplication. In this case, it's a, about a nine to one multiplication through the gear set and then we have our axles that go on this side and then one on the other that uh, go out to the wheels and allow us to, to move forward. And this kind of differential here, what is that? Yeah, so actually like this is an open differential. So if one of the wheels were to spin, um, the other one wouldn't quite get the torque it would need, yep. but, but that's kind of counteracted with the, the brains in the, in the Tesla control unit. So yep. yeah, pretty standard, um, not really a high performance uh, differential, but Tesla makes it work with uh, their control electronics. Uh, that kind of explains how it all works, but then there's also some, some thermal control and uh, oiling that happens in this uh, drive unit that's, that's pretty interesting. So, contrary to popular belief, Dave, yeah, we do have a filter. Right. So there's a pretty standard filter, oil filter. Uh, what happens here is we have our oil pump, which picks up from the, the bottom, from the sump of this, uh, this drive unit, and it pumps oil, high pressure oil, through this little, uh, this port here, which passes into the outside of the filter. It passes to, through the filter, go into the inside, and then it's pumped through a little tube on the inside. And that's right. And of just, the casing. It looks like just a standard oil filter. Yeah. So it probably has a, a relief valve inside, uh, some sort of valve to prevent it from getting plugged up. Yep. So that, that pumps clean oil up to the cooler. So the oil is then immediately cooled after it's pumped. Uh, we have a heat exchanger where glycol, what was the uh, G48, G48 uh, coolant uh, passes through the heat exchanger. The oil and the coolant are in separate chambers, but they're able to transfer heat between each other. So the coolant is cooling the oil. Uh, once it's cooled, it goes two places. One, it goes to the stator and the other one, it pumps it through this tube and it oils the uh, input shaft and secondary shaft bearings. So there's a plate at the bottom here that uh, guides the oil, and then eventually it returns back to the sump uh, through this plastic uh, guard, I guess it would yeah, be, first kind of oil yeah. guide. Um, and there's one more measure. Oh, get too close to the stator. <laughs> there's one more measure. There's actually a magnet in the bottom that picks up uh, any uh, fine particles yeah. that, that uh, come off with, uh, with the wear of the bearings. Almost like a regular transmission. Yeah, that the, they would oil, have the fill plug would have one, right? Yeah. Now there isn't. Uh, there's an oil filter, and when you pull the pump, you can drain the oil really easily. Yeah. Uh, but there is a, a fairly traditional oil fill plug, uh, and then there's a breather valve on the top. So over here we have that breather valve. So that's kind of how the oil works. Um, and then we have cooling through here and cooling through the inverter. Okay. Thanks for watching. Uh, Mitch did a great job here. Uh, one thing is make sure you, uh, you hit the like button and also hit the subscribe button. Follow us on Instagram, YouTube, uh, visit our website www.allev.ca and uh, any final words Mitch? Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram, electricfutureng, uh, but we'll see you next time. Great, thank you.